let me do this question here. Um, I, I think I have been a finish to do that. All right. Uh, so uh, with these circular motion questions, even though the they kind of look quite a bit different uh, for ones that are not involving circular motion. But the basic strategy you, you use is still the same. You still use a standard strategy. You still draw a free body diagram. You still go through all these steps. The only thing that changes are kind of what you know about the nature of the forces and the acceleration that you are dealing with. So uh, let me talk through that in the next 20 to 30 minutes here. Um, it says a ball of some mass is uh, uh, tied to a string. It's being swung in a vertical circle with some radius. And it's giving you tangential velocity in centimeters per second. All right. Um, it says find the tension in the string. Mm. All right. Um, by the way, as a matter of plugging in numbers, I will. I would probably convert all this into basic SI units. No. <laughs> but I'm going to just do it in symbols, so I don't have to worry about that. So this is the setup. Um, let's see, this is the center of the circle. And I have a ball of some mass that's tied to a string. And it's uh, going in circles. And I guess um, you have to, oh, I don't know why my string is started. Uh, it's tied to a string. And you have to imagine someone holding this end and kind of shaking your hand in uh, such a way as to make this move in circles. Can I draw a circle freehand? All right, so that's uh, how the ball is moving in circle. <laughs> and um, it says, oh, uh, I guess it's asking for two different positions. It's asking for one at the top of the circle and one at the bottom of the circle. So we are going to have to deal with the two different situations. One where the ball is here. This is going to be my A and one and moving this way, V. And one where the ball is down here and moving this way. This is my B. All right. And uh, I guess there's one thing that's a bit um, unrealistic here where the ball, we are assuming the ball will be moving at same constant speed, but uh, well, let's leave that there. All right, um, so it says find the tension in the string. All right, uh, we have the mass. I already labeled the mass. Let me label the radius R. So, Let's uh, draw, start with the free body diagram. Um, I'll do step A uh, or part A and then do part B. Um, yeah, uh, let me do A first. I think a B is a little bit conceptually easier, but let me do A first. A comes first. A. So let's just start out with a free body diagram. Once again, the free body diagram is uh, illustration of the forces on the ball. So. Here's my ball. What are the forces? Um, well, there's always going to be gravity. So let me draw gravity, mg. And I always ask myself this question. Did I draw all the forces? Probably not. It's not in free fall. It's uh, attached to a string, so there must be tension. Now, what direction is tension? It can't be upward because tension always pulls. It never pushes. So tension must be downward as well. Then once again, here's the question. Did I draw all the forces? Does this look like a correct free body diagram? And here's the answer that uh, might be surprising to some of you. Yes, it is complete free body diagram. The ball is accelerating downward. And in fact, it's probably accelerating downward at a rate greater than gravitational acceleration. This is the most the trickiest thing about circular motion, that it's hard to imagine 
um, pull at this position and think, oh, there is accelerate, there is a downward acceleration. In fact, that's greater than G. Um, but what centripetal acceleration says is this. Whenever something is moving in a circle, there is acceleration associated with that motion in circle. And that acceleration is the speed of motion squared divided by R. This comes from purely geometric kinematical considerations. So at the top here, if the ball is moving fast enough, then this centripetal acceleration can be so large that it's greater than gravitational acceleration. I'm trying to draw G, I don't know if it looks like G. Um, it can be <laughs> great enough so that it's greater than G. And that's the situation you have here. Um, so at the smallest possible speed, this string would just go slack. So this tension can go as low as G, uh, as low as zero. That's the lowest it can go. It can reverse the direction. Um, and so basically at very slow speeds, the ball might be in free fall, accelerating downward at G. And as the ball moves faster and faster and faster, in order to keep it at this radius, the centripetal, ex the acceleration must be greater. So you start needing tension to keep moving, keep the ball moving in the circular, um, circular path. So, so that, this is the free body diagram. The first time you see it, it might look surprising. It might even look incomplete, but once you learn um, the features of circular motion, then that is the complete free body diagram. So, all right, coordinate axis. Let's say this downward direction is positive x. Components, no components, it's all along positive x. Um, let me write uh, Newton's second law equations. So net force is equal to, uh, oh, sum of the two forces. Mg plus T is equal to mass times acceleration and here I happen to know what the formula for acceleration is. So let me write it down. V squared over R. So um, that's it. Uh, I guess I have one equation and one unknown. I can solve for that one unknown. So solving for that one unknown <laughs> tension is equal to, uh, let me factor out M. M times V squared over R minus g. All right, all you have to do is plug in numbers. Uh, make sure you, um, so here at this point is where I would just convert everything to basic SI units and plug in that uh, basic SI unit number because um, uh, frankly, this thing, um, well, um, Sometimes I like to let the units just cancel out, but because you have this V squared thing, I don't think the units will cancel out. So it's kind of better to, and besides the value of the G you would like to use is probably meters per second squared. So just cover all the units <laughs> to kilograms, meters, and seconds. <laughs> all right, so that's uh, part A. So for part B, a lot of the steps will look similar and the considerations will look quite comparable, familiar. What you have to remember and make sure you do correctly is that, um, is that uh, you get the direction of the forces correct and all that. So let's do B. B, um, free body diagram um, for the ball down at the bottom here. Um, so, all right, there's always gravity pulling it downward. As I said, I like to draw gravity. It's the one force that's always consistent. I always find, all right. Now, um, is that all, is that it or do I need more? Um, now, I still have this string attached to here, still top. So there must be tension pulling it upward that way. So let me just draw that tension, oops, right. Not quite drawing it, it's fine. I'm not drawing it large enough. Uh, all right, so there's tension and 
um, once again, the question you should ask is, did I draw all the forces and does it look right? So um, in answering both of those questions, really what you need to figure out is, what is the direction of acceleration? And here, once again, it's the fact that it's a circular motion that matters. That alone gives you the direction of acceleration. The ball at this point is accelerating upward. Technically, it's accelerating towards the center of the circle, which happens to be upward. Upward at the value given there above, V squared over R. So um, here, I need to have upward acceleration. And that's where I realized I drew mg a little bit too large. But here's the consolation. You have two forces, one up, one downward. So all you need to be able to say is that upward force tension is greater than mg downward. So that it is accelerating upward. So, all right, um, so that's it. Uh, let me label that upward direction as my positive x. Then uh, on, again, no components. It's a kind of a one dimensional question for the points where we picked. So I can write down net force. Net force in the x direction is uh, tension is in the positive direction minus mg is equal to uh, mass times acceleration and it's the same acceleration, v squared over r. So tension is equal to, so, uh, solving for tension, tension is equal to, let me factor out m again, m times, the so v squared over r remains the same, but uh, here, so you see plus instead of minus. It's so because uh, in terms of providing that centripetal acceleration uh, up here, gravity was helping, um, acting downward in the direction of centripetal acceleration. But down here, gravity is uh, kind of acting in the opposite direction. So tension is the first to compensate for that. And then enough you know, force to give the net force uh, of centripetal force.